the priority has been the safety of our people, uh, not only in the workplace, but at home. And that's been a continuous driver uh, in the last few months. It's discussed on a, a daily basis, and we, are to, we discuss BCMs in terms of business continuity, supply chain, and uh, fortunately, during the start of the total lockdown in South Africa, we were um, seen as essential services in some of our business areas. And that was mainly in, in coal mining, the potable drinking water, and obviously agriculture. So those sort of sectors, albeit uh, the balance of those industries which they serve were not back, we were forced to bring people back into the, the workplace. Uh, we have 7,600 people, 26 countries, and if I update to this slide, uh, as of the 24th, uh, that's when I put the slide, but we do have a uh, more relevant number, uh, we have 183 cases, of which 90 are active, 89 have recovered, and unfortunately, three people have passed in the last two weeks. And uh, they, were, they were admitted to casualty to ICU, and unfortunately, uh, we lost three of our co-workers in the last two weeks. Uh, at the moment, we have only one person that is hospitalized, uh, but as the pandemic is actually rising in the Gauteng province and KwaZulu-Natal, and I'll show you exactly what uh, with this slide is, we have uh, a majority of our people in South Africa, of the 7,600, yes. and the majority of them are working in the Gauteng and also KwaZulu-Natal. And if I go into the next slide, you can actually then see that the majority of our cases is in the Gauteng province and KwaZulu-Natal. And from you know South Africa now number five in terms of infections, uh, we have nowhere reached the peak of our curve yet, and therefore uh, we are vigilant in terms of our operation in the areas that we operate, that we have shift patterns, that we've got spare ships available, because our biggest, in terms of supply and essential services like uh, the mines and also water and agriculture, we actually can't let customers down and at the same time, we have to make sure that our people are 100% safe when they come to work. Unfortunately, uh, we've seen most of the cases not, we haven't seen uh, work outbreaks. We've seen people coming from outside uh, that are showing symptoms and then of course being turned away. And it's obviously around how they're behaving on week uh, weekends and weekdays after hours. In. And that's been a challenge to control. Uh, moving on, Mark. To give you an idea, as we look into, lo into our full lockdown, and I guess if we looked at all the countries in which we operate, no one went to the extent of South Africa, where we totally locked down uh, from that last week in March. We had 35% people uh, working in site of our operations. Uh, this is on a global basis and 18% were actually working from home. As the levels are being lifted, you are seeing, and you can see from the graph that we are seeing people coming back to work. Um, and at the moment, we have 81% of our people back in the workplace. 12% are working from home. And of course, you can guess that a lot more people are asking to work from home if can especially as this pandemic is, is rising in this area. Um, you know, so we, we've got a lot of our people back. Unfortunately, you know, in the manufacturing sector, the manufacturing areas in which we operate, we do need a lot of people to run continuous uh, operations, which means maybe not, you're not getting all the volume, but you still need the total cost base there. And of course, that puts a lot of pressure on the margins, and uh, and Edwin will talk to you about that. Mark, next slide. We've also done a lot of work in terms of donating in terms of communities in which we operate. Uh, we've donated almost 12 million rand 
in uh, PPE, uh, water systems, uh, sanitizer, and we've also launched uh, iPledge, which is almost, uh, we've got 2 million rand. That is really from the staff within ACI, suppliers, and NSU, and I know I've got lots of bankers out there want to pledge some money. For 287, we are, uh, we can feed a family for a week. Uh, at the moment, uh, we put, we've distributed 3,200 parcels. There's another 3,000 going out in the next two weeks. And our target is to get to uh, 10,000 uh, parcels in the next uh, month. And, this, and it is very dire out there. You know, people are starving. People are not earning income. One I can say through this pandemic uh, that, that everybody in ACI at all levels has been paid, uh, and which is obviously making sure that we give people um, you know, encouragement to come to work under these difficult circumstances but also maintain their dignity in this difficult time. Next one, Mark. So those are some of the initiatives, and we've done a lot with the Nelson Mandela Fund and JAM, and, uh, but it, the emphasis has been on water, food, and sanitization. And of course, uh, we are seeing the stress now of uh, service delivery or lack of service delivery, which was happening prior the COVID-19 has obviously come back to bite us all now that communities just, just don't have the water or the facilities to get them through this pandemic. Okay, okay so that's just an introduction. It is a priority. COVID is hot on our lips. It hasn't gone away and, it, and in my mind will remain with us for the foreseeable future and therefore the task team will remain intact and how we manage our business is important. Uh, the business drivers, and I, we'll just go through these very quickly. The exchange rate, we did see the, uh, the loss of the, the red against major currencies. You now we averaged the first half at 16.66. That has helped revenue, without a doubt. It's not only from the COVID, obviously this was also the downgrade of the country that took place in this time. We are starting to see the rand strengthen a little bit, uh, but it does play a big role on the uh, on the revenue and some profits in some countries. With if you bring it back to South Africa, next mark uh, gold. Um, what I can say about gold is that a lot of the the older mines in Western Africa that had closed, they now talking to us about reopening. I think there's a lot more buoyancy on gold and the outlook uh, quite positive in these times. So we are seeing, and uh, Edwin will, will give you some uh, some minds that are now talking to us in that gold. Next one, Mark. Um, PGMs are still holding. The biggest disappointment around PGMs is obviously, uh, and even Angler announced on their Mandeville, the underground shafts are not coming back at a very limited production and we're not seeing the volumes going through concentrated. So it has uh, a double effect on us. It has effect on underground shock tube, but it also has an effect on the liquid xanthate in terms of extraction. Because as you know, we, uh, we look after about 80% of the concentrators in South Africa. And in uh, in April, a lot of those comes concentrators, April and into May, a lot of those concentrators actually shut down because of not enough oil in the system. But uh, we're hoping that this will improve the remainder of the year. Uh, Central Africa, definitely uh, copper under pressure still, and obviously cobalt. We did see through this time that mines and you were averting, you know, the the Glencore mines of Mapani that were closed and then told to go on for three months and now probably will we extend that. We are starting to see some of the mines coming back in Central Africa now. Uh, so that looks a lot better from where we saw in April and May. So uh, Central Africa coming back, 
for that, albeit at a slow, uh, a slow pace. Coal and iron ore, uh, iron ore prices low. Uh, iron, uh, coal for the Eskom uh, still quite robust. Uh, our coal for uh, customers looking pretty good. However, just even the open cost mines are being disjointed with stop and start uh, in terms of COVID uh, outbreaks. And what we've seen is where ships are being taken out of their mines and last actually postponed, it's around the COVID outbreaks in those areas. Moving on. Obviously, uh, this is the, 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 on the local mining. It did come up. You know, people are talking about this D shape coming back in mining, but I think for South Africa, we're not going to see a full D return. I see from that point, a flattening incline and the reason is is we won't see the underground mining come back I get the sense right away. I still think we're gonna only see that in the first quarter, second second quarter of two thousand and twenty one. Because they still very much restricted in the underground areas. Sure. Red crew oil also dropped off Showing some uh, return. And next slide, Mark. And that, and this was the, the horror show of our manufacturing sector. Uh, we waiting for May. It would have gone up, but uh, I think it's going to take us a long time to turn. This probably, and I'll talk to you a bit later in the, you know, in terms of the. Uh, the outlook for the remainder of the year, we are uncertain of what manufacturing sector actually comes back and in what guise and form it will actually be. Because we are hearing of customers that have actually closed or closing uh, and uh, it is a concern because this does take a lot of the specialty chemicals. In the sector, you know, the set, the um, the SAPI uh, are exporting as much as they did. We've seen impacts on sulfur, sulfuric. You've also seen the coatings and paint sector has totally been decimated in the last three to four months. So you'll be watching that with uh, a very close interest. Um, 